Hi everyone and welcome to the time-lapse video of my pastel painting of two black Labradors in a beautiful autumnal forest scene. There was lots of detail in this piece and a type of background that I love using, that bokeh, out of focus background. Next month on my Patreon channel I'm going to cover how to paint this type of black fur using lovely colourful highlights. But I hope you enjoy this time lapse here on my YouTube channel. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe here for all my future videos. So, as always, I begin with my background. And I'm using velour paper made by Hanamu. And it's a paper brand that I love to use, especially when I'm tackling a big blurred background like this. I can blend many layers. And you see I build it up gradually. And each layer gets nicely blended into the layer below. I go into a lot more detail over on my Patreon channel if you're interested in learning how to create backgrounds like this. Last month I made a full length tutorial showing two hours of real time footage, fully narrated with all the colour codes so you can follow along and see exactly what I'm doing. But I love the time lapse videos, even for myself to look back and see the progress of a painting is a lot of fun. So I spend a long time on this background. It takes quite a while to build up this out of focus effect. And I use mostly unison colour soft pastels. And later you'll see me use some Faber-Castell pit pencils also to get finer details, especially in the dog's faces. But for backgrounds, I love being a bit more painterly, a bit looser in my style. I can really use those bigger sticks to make larger marks and fill in a lot of area quite quickly. And once I get to a certain point on the background, I can never resist making a start on one of those faces. And you see me using a lot of different colors Black animals in particular reflect so much of the light around them. White animals also reflect a lot of colours. But I love to paint black animals especially as you get often if they're outside you'll get beautiful blues and all the colours of the sky reflected off them. You also might find hints of green if they're sitting on grass. They're just a really interesting colour of dog to paint. And I work really hard at keeping my edges all nice and soft. And the edges around the dog nice and contrasted from the background so that the dog really stands out. And I work on down the dog, always trying to make sure that I have the, the background pretty much done before I work that edge of the dog. But this is split up over many, many days. So there are days when I feel like painting leaves and there are days when I don't and I would much prefer to tackle some of the fur. So I try to work on what I'm in the mood for. I think I ran out of steam in the left corner on the leaves. Like a lot of portrait artists, 
My favorite thing to paint is always the face. And I'm always keen to get that part done. I feel much happier when I get the likeness of the, the people or the animals. I can really relax into the rest of the painting. And I think that's often a problem when you're learning to paint. Your painting really doesn't look very good in the progress stages. And it's knowing to not panic and rush things, just to continue to take your time and with pastel, just building up the layers gradually. And this piece was quite large. It was, I believe, 22 by 16 inches. So there's a lot of a lot of space to fill on that scale. And this is why I love the soft pastel so much. You can make small marks with them, you can get a lot of detail, but when you need to fill in a large area of colour, you've got so much pigment to work with, you can use the sticks on their sides, and you get such vibrant colour from them in comparison to the pastel pencils. So when I'm working a background like this, I try to look at my photo reference almost with blurred eyes, pick out some really prominent shapes and then just fill in the gaps. I'm looking at it like shapes and forms and colours, it's not leaves to me. If I start thinking it's leaves, I panic a bit. <laughs> but if it's just shapes and colours, I can break that down focus on one area at a time and try not to get too confused. Foliage and greenery has always been very difficult to me. I've had to work on that a lot. And I find the more I've tried to loosen up a bit in my style, those things became easier. You want to try and represent leaves especially quite randomly. And by making your marks a bit more painterly, a bit looser, that's easier to achieve. One area I always find takes such a long time are dog's legs and paws. You think that the face is going to take you the longest, but on Labradors especially with this short fur, there's so much pattern and change of direction in the fur on the legs and it really does take a long time. But first I work some of the area right underneath the dogs, trying to give them a bit of ground to sit on. And you can see that I jump about a bit, I get easily distracted, I pick up a colour and I think about the place I'm going to apply it and then I notice several other places I could use it. So I jump about a bit. And it helps in this style of painting so that I don't get too bogged down in one area. But each leg and each paw gets the same amount of attention that I would give any area on the dog's face. I think with dog portraits or animal portraits, the temptation is always to rush once you get the face finished. But I always try to apply the same attention to the chest on the front of the animal or on their paws. And with this foreground, 
I'm loosely following the photo reference, choosing to simplify it a little where I can, but then really trying to make some nice crisp leaf shapes. If I have just enough detail in the foreground, it makes that blurry background make a little more sense. So I'm nearing the end now over at the final corner and it always feels like I'm on the home stretch at this point. And again I'm looking at this whole corner as shapes and how they fit together rather than seeing it as a very detailed collection of dead leaves. It definitely helps to think of it differently. So I'm nearing the end of the time lapse. I had a bit of a camera malfunction at the very end of this piece, so I'm missing the very last little section. But I hope this gives you a good idea of how one of my paintings build up from the beginning to the end. And if you're interested in learning some of my techniques, do check out my other videos here on YouTube. Or if you can, have a look at my Patreon channel. I have a lot more real-time footage there where I share lots of my tips and techniques for pastel. But thanks for watching this time-lapse and I'll see you next time.